So we are calling on these medical organizations of the United States, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Endocrine Society, the Pediatric Endocrine Society, the American Medical Association, the American Psychological Association, and the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry to follow the science and their European colleagues and immediately stop the promotion of social affirmation, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries for, sur for children and adolescents who experience distress over their biological sex. You just watched a snippet from a press conference held by the American College of Pediatricians where its executive director, Dr. Jill Simmons, calls on medical organizations to reject gender-affirming health care for all minors. Ban it across the board. That's what they want. Now, that statement right there made headlines. It was on Fox News and also tweeted out by large right-wing accounts, including Elon Musk and also Jimmy Dore, who writes, quote, I'm sure these doctors are all just phobic haters. Now, even though he's being sarcastic, Jimmy Dore is actually correct, perhaps for the first time in his entire life. Now, he might be correct on accident, but what he said right there, nonetheless, is still absolutely correct. These doctors are all just literally phobic haters, and this organization actually materialized in 2002 in opposition to gay marriage and gay adoption. But you know what? You don't have to take it from me. Take it from the Southern Poverty Law Center, who designated the organization as a hate group for pushing anti-LGBTQ plus pseudoscience, equating homosexuality to pedophilia, supporting conversion therapy, and also calling medically necessary gender-affirming health care for trans youth child abuse. Now, its members have also accused trans people of ushering in totalitarianism. Very serious comment from an organization comprised of doctors. They've also called transgenderism a cult. They've published blog posts wondering why LGBTQ plus people haven't added a P to the acronym for pedophiles. And they've also argued that children who are exposed to homosexuality are at increased risk of emotional and even physical harm. So needless to say, yeah, these doctors are all just a bunch of phobic haters who dupe unsuspecting people into thinking that the science is on the side of transphobes when it's not. The overwhelming majority of credible medical associations agree that gender-affirming health care for trans youth is both necessary and life-saving. And that melodramatic press release from this small collection of quacks isn't going to change that because, I mean, you could probably find a doctor or a medical expert to validate any fringe position. But what matters is that we listen to the consensus of medical experts on any particular issue because that's how you actually find out what's true and what's bullshit. But on its face, the American College of Pediatrics or Pediatricians it sounds legitimate, and I don't blame you if you mistake them for the American Academy of Pediatrics, because that's happened quite a bit. In fact, this kind of thing right here is typically how medical misinformation spreads. I talked to Dr. Caitlin Jettelina back in 2021, who's an epidemiologist, about how so many people were falling for anti-vax misinformation, and it was usually because they got duped by fringe organizations with official-sounding names, and since they use technical medical jargon that the average person isn't going to understand, you know, they come off as trustworthy experts, even though they're charlatans pushing junk science. And that's what's happening here. This hate group hides behind the credentials of the quack affiliated with it and benefits from the cloud of the American Academy of Pediatrics because the average person isn't going to know the difference between the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American College of Pediatricians. One is a quack organization and the other is a legitimate organization that actually publishes peer-reviewed studies on medical issues. But all you have to do is dive a little bit beneath the surface to see what's going on with regard to this organization. So if you go to the Doctors Protecting Children website where this press conference was published, you really don't have to look far to see who's behind it. A bunch of religious organizations like the American Association of Christian Counselors, for example, which promoted conversion therapy for gay people but later switched to encouraging gay people to be celibate after the gay conversion therapy practice became a little bit too controversial. Now there's also the Christian Medical and Dental Associations, which is effectively a lobbying group for religious doctors, but but I mean, if you look further, you'll also see that they're supported by the Family Research Council, which is another vehemently anti-LGBTQ plus hate group run by notorious theocrat Tony Perkins. But if you watch longer in that video, you'll see a speech from Dr. Andre Van Mol of the Christian Medical and Dental Association, who's the board member of a mega church that literally tried to use prayer to resurrect a toddler that passed away. Now, that's important because you need to get a sense as to who the doctors are that make up this organization. They may be doctors and pediatricians and have 
the credentials of such and be licensed to practice it. But there are also ideologues who put religiosity above everything else, including science. But if you're still on the fence about whether or not this is a right-wing op, well, we got confirmation last year that this is literally a right-wing op thanks to a leak. Aaron Reed reports, quote, in 2023, the organization inadvertently left a Google Drive public, leading to the leak of a massive trove of files showing their extremist roots. According to these documents, the group received significant media training from the Alliance Defending Freedom, a right-wing organization that has played a large role in the passage and defense of anti-LGBTQ plus laws in the United States. It also received free video production from Family Watch International, a group of Christian fundamentalists opposing homosexuality, birth control, abortion, and sex education. And that's really important to highlight here because even though this is an SPLC designated hate group specifically because of their anti-LGBTQ plus beliefs, they're also in lockstep with conservatives on virtually every other issue, and they often use their expertise to validate conservative positions on other issues. For example, they're a plaintiff in the right-wing lawsuits brought about to ban Mifepristone, which is an abortion drug. But with that being said, you know, they do care the most about hating gay people and opposing LGBTQ plus rights. That's really how they got their reputation and why they launched to begin with because this organization got started as a splinter group of conservative doctors who got mad at the American Academy of Pediatrics for releasing a report that concluded that children of same-sex parents, they fare just as well as children of opposite-sex parents. And the conservatives in that organization were like, nah uh And then they launched their own contrarian organization to just, I guess try to contradict that without evidence. But as the Washington Post explains, Joseph Zanga, founder of the American College of Pediatricians, who had led the American Academy of Pediatrics in the late 1990s, described the Splinter Organization as a Judeo-Christian traditional values organization in a 2003 interview with the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality, which promoted conversion therapy. Of course it did. His organization's core beliefs are that life begins at conception and that the traditional family unit, headed by an opposite sex couple poses far fewer risk factors in the adoption and raising of children he said at the time zanga declined a post request for an interview internal records from 2010 show how the group tied homosexuality to health risks even death in a letter campaign to educators citing a 1991 study to demonstrate that for each year adolescents delay self-labeling as gay the risk of suicide decreases by 20 percent but it turns out that was complete bullshit. And now that all of the junk science that they use to justify homophobia and homophobic policies is no longer persuasive to most people, they've just switched their targets. And now they're doing the same thing to trans people and using junk science to justify bans on gender affirming healthcare, for example. So at the end of the day, this is nothing more than a hate group with a name that sounds legitimate but they're not legitimate. And their recommendations aren't taken seriously by medical experts, which is important. Now, Aaron Reed continues, quote, despite the widespread misinformation, every major medical organization in the United States supports gender affirming care. In February, the American Psychological Association, the largest psychological association in the world, released a policy resolution stating that gender affirming care is medically necessary and saves lives. The American Academy of Pediatrics currently recommends that transgender youth have access to gender affirming care tailored to their unique needs. The Advocates for Trans Equality maintains a list of over 30 of the largest U.S.-based medical organizations organizations that support transgender care, including the Endocrine Society, the Pediatric Endocrine Society, the American Public Health Association, and the American Medical Association. And the American College of Pediatricians are not among those organizations that are actually credible. Now, the reason why those organizations are credible and the American College of Pediatricians is not credible is because those organizations listed by Aaron Reed, they represent the medical consensus on this issue. The American College of Pediatricians, they have just 700 members and happen to be propped up by rich right-wing donors, whereas the American Academy of Pediatrics, which is the real organization, is represented by 67,000 pediatricians who base their support for gender-affirming healthcare on peer-reviewed studies as opposed to religious beliefs and pseudoscience. So, I mean... I rest my case. This is not a real medical organization. It is a fake medical organization using pseudoscience and misinformation to justify anti-trans policies. They're not experts. They're quacks and should be disregarded entirely. Mom. I'm gay. 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 G
gaze. I'm transgender.